everyone. Welcome to my channel, Study at Ease. Today, we are going to continue with the chapter, Real Numbers. Let's have a look at the third exercise. What do we have to learn from the third exercise? The exercise, as you see in your textbook, is very short. There, we want to deal with irrational numbers. So, what are irrational numbers? The numbers which cannot be expressed in the form P by Q, where Q not equal to 0. So the question says, prove that root 5 is irrational. It is taken from NCRT grade 10, chapter 1, exercise 1.3. So what we have to prove is root 5 is irrational. The first step is that we're going to assume that root 5 is rational. This is similar to indirect proof. That first you're going to assume the opposite of what you have to prove. So root 5 is rational. Then we can find integers a and b where b not equal to 0 such that you can write it in the form root 5 is equal to a over b. Okay. Now suppose if a and b have any common factor other than 1, if there are any common factors other than 1, we will divide by the common factor and make them co-prime. So assume that a and b are co-prime. Now the question that will come to your mind is, what is a co-prime? Co-prime means if you have two numbers, after reducing them, those two numbers shouldn't have any common factors other than 1. Such numbers are called as co-prime. In this case, you have 6 and 8. I have reduced it and it has become 3 and 4. Now 3 and 4 does not have any other common number apart from 1. Now, let's go to the next step. Uh, we have already written root 5 is equal to a over b. On rearranging, we get root 5, b is equal to a. Now, we're going to square on both the sides. When you square, it becomes fa root 5b, the whole square, is equal to a square. So, it becomes 5b square is equal to a square. Now, this means that a square is divisible by 5 and then a is also divisible by 5. So now we are going to write a in another form, which is a is equal to 5c for some integer c. Okay. After you write that, you are going to substitute the value of a in the previous equation. So when you are substituting, it becomes 5b square is equal to a will become 5c the whole square. So it becomes 5b square is equal to 25c square. So you have 5 and 22, 25 the other side. So it becomes b square is equal to 5c square. If you look at this equation at the moment, you will see that b square is divisible by 5. That means b is also divisible by 5. When we started with the proof, we wrote that a and b are co-prime. That means they do not have any common factors. But now we have seen that both a and b are having a common factor which is 5. So this contradicts the fact that a and b are co-prime. So it is also contradicting the fact that root 5 is rational. Hence we can conclude that root 5 is irrational. Now, let us look at the next question. The question says, prove that 3 plus 2 root 5 is irrational. This question is also taken from our textbook, chapter 1, exercise 1.3. Now, as I told you in the previous question, the first step is assuming the opposite of what we have to prove. So, here we have to prove that 3 plus 2 root 5 is irrational. So, we're going to assume that 3 plus 2 root 5 is rational. So, we can find co-prime a and b where b not equal to 0 in such a way that we can write 3 plus 2 root 5, take it from the question, is equal to a over b. Now, let us rearrange it. How will you rearrange it? It will become 2 root 5 is equal to a over b minus 3. The 3 is taken from this side to the other side, so the sign changes. So, now, root 5 is equal to 1 over 2 bracket a over b minus 
3. Since a and b are integers, we can say that 1 over 2 bracket a over b minus 3 is rational. Then we can say that root 5 is also rational. But this contradicts the fact that root 5 is irrational. Hence, we can conclude by saying that 3 plus 2 root 5 is irrational. Let us move on to the next exercise. So in this exercise, we're going to deal with rational numbers and their decimal expansions. Well, in class 9th, we have already studied about rational numbers and about terminating decimal expansions or non-terminating repeating decimal expansions, etc. So here, under this topic, we're going to consider rational numbers. Say we write it in the form P by Q, where Q, the denominator, is not equal to 0. And we're going to explore exactly when will the decimal expansion of P over Q is terminating and when it is going to be non-terminating or recurring. Okay? So, now, let us assume the rational number be P over Q, where Q not equal to 0. So, uh, the prime factorization of Q, the denominator, if it is in the power of 10, then we can say that the decimal expansion is terminating. Now, in the textbook, if you see, there are three theorems which is based on this principle. Now, it simply says that, suppose if x is a rational number which can be expressed in the form p over q, where q not equal to 0, and if you take the prime factorization of the denominator q, if it has 2 raised to n and 5 raised to m, where m and n are non-negative integers, then we can say that the decimal expansion of x or the rational number will be a terminating expansion. Let us have a look at one of the examples. Let us take 3 over 8. So 3 over 8 is equal to 3 by 2 to the power 3. This is the p over q. The next step is that you have to find an equivalent fraction in such a way that the denominator is a power of 10. So now we have 2 to the power 3. So we should have 5 to the power 3. When you're doing something to the denominator, we have to ensure that we have to do the same thing to the numerator as well. So we will write 3 multiplied by 5 cubed divided by 2 to the power 3 multiplied by 5 to the power 3. So this will give us an answer 375 divided by 1000, which is 10 cubed. Okay, so on taking the decimal expansion, we will get a terminating decimal, which is 0 0.375. So let's take one more question, that is 13 divided by 125. So we will write it in the form 13 divided by 5 cube, where this is the P over Q form. What is the next step? We have to write, we have to find an equivalent in which the denominator is the power of 10. So if it is 5 cube, then we should have a 2 cube. So can we only add 2 cube to the denominator? No. When we are doing something to the denominator, we have to do the same to the numerator as well. So we write it as 13 multiplied by 2 cube divided by 5 cube multiplied by 2 cube. So the numerator on writing it, it will become, you will get the answer 104 divided by 1000, which is 10 cube. So 104 divided by 1000 will give you a decimal expansion 0 0.104, which is a terminating decimal. Let us take a question from the textbook NCRT Grade 10, Chapter 1, Exercise 1.4. The question is 29 divided by 343. So it can be written as 29 divided by 7 cube. Mm. We said if x, the rational number, is of the form p over q, where q not equal to 0. So the denominator, if you take the prime factorization of the denominator, it should be of the form 2 raised to n, 5 raised to m. But in this case, if you see, there is no 2 raised to n or 5 raised to m to make it into the powers of 10. We have 7 cube. So we can say 
This is a non-terminating decimal expansion. Another question from the MCRT textbook, which is 23 divided by 2 to the power 3 and 5 to the power 3, which is equal to, now we have to write the equivalent in such a way that the denominator is going to give you the power of 10. So the, the, uh, the fraction becomes 23 multiplied by 5 divided by 2 to the power 3 and 5 to the power 3. So on expanding it, you will get the answer 115 divided by 10 cubed, which is 1000. So the decimal expansion will be 0 0.115. So we are getting a decim, uh, we are getting a terminating expansion for this fraction. Let us consider the last question for today's session, which is 129 divided by 2 to the power 2, 5 to the power 7, and 7 to the power 5. We have learned that if a rational number x can be expressed in the form p over q, where q not equal to 0, then if you take the prime factorization of the denominator, if it is in the form 2 raised to n and 5 raised to m, it's going to be terminating. Otherwise, it is non-terminating decimal expansion, isn't it? Now, in this case, you can see that in the denominator, you will find 7 to the power 5. So, we can conclude saying that the decimal expansion of this fraction is going to be non-terminating expansion. So, uh, I hope today's topic is clear to everyone. If you have any doubts or if you have any other suggestions for me, Please put your valuable comments in the comment section below. And uh, if you like my videos, please like, share and subscribe. See you in the next class. I'll be starting with a new chapter. So stay tuned. Bye.